I'm Jackie. Welcome to another one of my reviews. Today I'm going to review Samurai Spirit by Antoine Bauza, published by Fanforge. As you would probably know, um, Antoine Bauza is a very prolific designer, notably recently he has designed Hanabi. But before that, one of his most famous designs was Ghost Stories, which is um, a co-op game where fighting monks battle against monsters and spirits, etc. So, when I heard about Samurai Spirit, when everyone who knew Ghost Stories heard about Samurai Spirit, um, the thought of Ghost Stories popped up again. It's very similar, there are fighting samurais in this case uh, with supernatural power that fight against an uh, invading army of people this time, not monsters. But the structure and the, the feeling of the game is very similar. There are all these enemies coming towards you and slowly destroying your village. So one of the things that I want to address in this review is not only uh, consider the game per se, but also in relation to Ghost Stories. But before we do that, uh, let me show you how the game works and I'll be back. This is a three-player game setup. Um, you may notice the three characters, each with its own special power, a certain number of fences around the village and the people and the houses in the village. What you're trying to do in the game is trying to make the village and your characters survive throughout the deck of cards. Um, you do this three times if at the end of the game you still have at least one villager, at least one house and no one is permanently dead, dead you win the game. So what you do in your turn you have a choice between three actions pass, that you usually don't do unless you're forced to, draw one card and fight it, or support, which means you basically take one card from the top of the deck, put it in the infiltrator space, and land your special power out to someone else. But what you normally do is you fight a card. So you flip a card and you consider what's on the card. Um, three things that you will have to consider. The strength of the enemy, the target of the enemy, and the special ability of the enemy. So all of them can change. They can lack a special ability or they can lack a specific target. So if um, they have a target like these have, you can choose either to fight them which means place them in your combat line on the right side of your character or to defend, placing them in the corresponding space on the left side of your character. You can only do this if the corresponding space is empty. So for example, if I drew this in this situation, there is nothing I could do but place it on the right side. Um, the reason you want to place people on the left side is that at the end of the round, when this deck runs out, there will be consequences for not having defended against one of these um, objectives. And the other big reason is that cards that are placed on the left hand side add to your um, fighting cap capability, they're trying to f fill it. And if you ever go over your um, capability, you are out for the round. Moreover, cards on the right hand side can activate the special ability. So the can card that is showing, let's see if I can find one with, with a special ability, will activate at the beginning of your round and do some uh, bad things to you. This is the most common, um, it gives you one damage, other can destroy a um, part of the village, first the fences, then they move to the houses. But the interesting thing is that you add these numbers and you move your token up. If you ever go over your fighting capability, as I said, you burn one additional fence 
and you're out for the remainder of the round, the, the, this deck basically. But if you manage to reach exactly the number on your character, you activate a special ability that varies from character to character, they're always good. You kill one of your people, of your enemies, and you go down by that number, so you can act potentially activate it again. Of course, you don't always have the choice to do one or the other, but if you can manage to do it, it's very good. And you keep doing this at your turn, you draw one card, you place it on one side or the other, or if you feel that it's a good uh, moment, you can lend out your um, special power, take one card from the top of the deck and place it in the infiltrator phase. Basically, at the end of the round, whatever is left in the infiltrator phase, you will check for flames on the bottom right, and if there are flames, you destroy uh, a piece of the village, and uh, so forth and so on. Um, you keep playing until either all characters are have passed, either because they choose so, or more most most often um, because they went over the fighting capability. And then you start a new round in which you add in uh, car stronger cards. The first round is played only with one, two, three, and fours. Then you add fives and sixes that also have um, more aggressive capabilities. Um, another thing to consider is that getting damage is dangerous on the overall, but useful on the short run. When your character gets two damages, if transforms, becomes a were animal, werewolf or something, this is a were monkey, and basically not only their fighting capability improve, but also their special ability becomes uh, stronger. It's in the same vein, each character has a different special capability and ability and they will increase the power of it. Um, if you get two more damages, you're dead and the game is over if one person dies. But now you have more space for more powerful enemies and you can activate your power more, most efficiently. You play this two, three round. Uh, as I said, uh, at the end of each round, there is the possibility that cards that were passed or infiltrated will destroy parts of the village. If you manage to finish the game with still all the characters alive, even on their animal part, at least one um, village member alive and at least one house uh, still standing, you win the game. Um, in the advanced version of the game, whenever you destroy something from the village, you suffer an additional consequence, so this could um, get a, a chain reaction going and you try to win if you fail and you will fail at the beginning you try again and try to be more efficient with the placement of your cards so i mentioned that each character has a different power and a different special ability that activates based on the fighting um, numbers here so the power is always active in your turn there are a few, um, like this one, allows you to ignore the, sh the ability of the showing um, card on your right hand side if it is a 1, a 3, or a 5. So, for example, this guy wouldn't suffer any consequences from this guy because he's a 1. Um, this one allows you to, when you draw a 1, a 3, or a 5, you can pass it to your, the player to your left or to your right, and they will fight as if they had um, drawn it. And the same thing exists also for the 2, 4, and 6, both the passing and the ignoring. This power allows you to discard a card if it matches, that you're fighting, if it matches cards on the right hand side of your character, like in this case, this could be discarded. Um, and there are a few other, this, if you don't like the card you drew, you place it under the deck and draw another one, you have to keep the second. And also the special abilities are different. Um, I will not explain them all, but this allows you to discard um, a character from other people's pile. Um, this one allows you to discard uh, infiltrators, but while the little powers are active every turn, 
to activate the special abilities on the bottom of the character card you have to manage to get exactly to the number shown here. So this is the game of Samurai Spirit and there are few things that I like a lot about this game. The art on the cards, the cards are very nice done, um, clear with the symbols, um, with the original art or on almost all of them, basically only the same card as uh, the same art, even if it's repeated, and the art on the characters is amazing. You can see the transformation of the different fighters um, into fighting animals, it's really really nice. The game itself is certainly a solid design. It plays in under an hour, um, it's easy to explain and easy to play. And this is where I think lies one of my problems um, with the game. The game is hard to win, as Antoine Bauza put it, it's different from the stories but as hard as Ghost Stories is, but I wouldn't consider it, it a deep game by any meaning. The choices are limited, um, often you can do much um, about the card and you have to go with the flow and do whatever is happening. Um, certainly you want to hope to get cards that allow you to reach your limit, but it's not always a choice that you have. So while it's certainly as difficult as Ghost Stories, the simplicity of the mechanism also means that you have less control about what happens. And to my taste, this is not a virtue. I'd rather try a different strategy every time uh, I play the game than focus on certain few things that you can do in this game and try to get by. This said, the game certainly has merits. As I said, it's easy to play, it's fun, um, it, the tension builds up nicely, so certainly delivers what it wants to, this feeling of, oh, we are under siege, they are coming, they are too many, we will take damage, we will suffer consequences, just try to limit them to a minimum. But um, you are basically doing the same thing over and over again with very little variation. Um, it's interesting that there are these powers that characters can use and pass around, but they don't, um, they don't influence your strategy much. Um, if you get a 1 and 3 and a 5 and you're immune to them, great, but there is nothing you can do to guarantee you get 1. So it's nice, it's fun. I personally prefer Ghost Stories, um, both on th in terms of um, graphic. This is less gory, so if you had a problem with uh, Ghost Stories, this will certainly not present the same problem. Um, I think that even not considering the expansion, Ghost Stories has um, a longer lifespan, um, guarantees you more uh, replayability. But this is a fun game, I was glad to play, I would play it again, and I hope that from this review you were able to gather whether it's a game that could work for you. And this was Samurai Spirit by Antoine Bauza. Thanks for watching. <laughs>